<laughs> Mr. Rogers is obviously a paladin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. Oh, yeah. I'll give you that. That sweater. <laughs> 20 AC from that alone. <laughs> you ought to hit him. He's like, not in my neighborhood. <laughs> And then he just smites you with a level four. <laughs> Boom. Having yeah. friends is important. <laughs> it's okay to feel sad. Welcome to Monsters and Multiclass, your weekly Dungeons and Dragons fix. I'm Kevin Odie. I'm Jared Bornigal. And I'm Will Milden. And we'll be hanging out with you for the next hour to talk about anything and everything D&D related. This week is the Monk Fighter Multiclass, and then the terrifying little red caps from Bolo's Guide to Monsters. So pull up a chair and listen up. All right, so today's classes are going to be the fighter and the monk. Uh, a fighter is a well-trained fighter. I don't know if there's any other way to, to word that one. Uh, one of the most standard and stereotypical classes in D&D, and this is the first time we've actually gotten a fighter. Uh, the other class is going to be the monk, uh, a, another well-trained martial class. Uh, main feature is its key points that it uses to... Uh, flip around the field and do some crazy bonus action stuff. Uh, so without further ado, let's hear some first thoughts. Will? So, I don't know. This combination does not do a lot for me. There's RP-wise a, or mechanically? They are very polar opposites uh, mechanically. Okay. So I can see a fighter training in karate. I can see a karate master learning some kind of uh, warfare, essentially, but... Mechanically speaking, you're looking at the Batman style. I can do everything with every piece of equipment character. Mm -hmm. And the polar opposite, which is the monk, which is I can do everything I need to do with no equipment. Right. Yeah. No, I see that. Um, Kevin? Yeah, that's an, I didn't think of that. That's kind of an interesting thought with it. Um, mechanically, I like this. I think there's definitely a lot of options there. It could work very well. Um, role play wise. So I kind of hints at the last episode where I, we always have been talking about how the fighter is just kind of the easiest role play to it. There's nothing to that class. And I actually really disagree. Um, I think it's kind of hard to all of a sudden just multi-class into a fighter. So it's really easy to say that they just fight well. It's just anyone could be a fighter. But in my mind, they're kind of the equivalent to like a pro athlete. Um, it, it's the one thing that ties all fighters together is an immense amount of training and dedication to their craft, which is fighting. Um, I, I think what one of the fluff texts, I think it says it in Xanathar is all fighters feel it is better to wound than be wounded. And it, it just a dedication to that idea. Right, right. And if you think about it, they, they are proficient in everything, all armor, light, medium, heavy, um, all weapons, simple, martial, ranged weapons, literally everything. They are just as comfortable fighting with a longbow as with a maul, with two short swords, with a javelin, with a quarterstaff. Think about the immense amount of training and dedication that takes. Yeah. It's, you know, it's like, going back to the pro athlete thing, it's like, I could hold a bat and take the proper stance and swing at a ball and get a hit sometimes and run the bases and catch a ball and throw a ball. But if you put me up against a pro, I mean, it's just pathetic. It's, it's not even close. Same idea as a farmer could have a rusty short sword under the bat in case they need it. And they could kind of swing it and, you know, get some hits and be okay with it. But put them up against a real fighter who has dedicated so much training and time and also just has the raw talent for it. It's not even close. Right. So that's fair. Uh, but I think the, uh, uh, pushback against that is we're not talking about multi-classing with a farmer. We're talking about multi-classing with uh, usually another skilled being. Right. So it's like, you know, uh, Michael Jordan going into baseball, which uh, I'm <laughs> losing everybody there, including myself. So I'll stop. But wait, well, why? everybody knows he yeah. did that. It was, oh, yeah, I know. Really like going on. About, it was a like, main uh, plot point of Space Jam. <laughs> <laughs> But how well he did is besides the point. He did very poorly in baseball. He was a triple A athlete. He did very poorly in baseball. I mean, compared to being the greatest basketball player alive, like I, I guess that's, that's throw a ball. Kind of what I'm getting at, though, is the fact that, you know, take any martial character and now you're saying, well, and also on top of the fact that they can use heavy armor, medium armor, uh, any martial weapon, now they can use ranged martial weapons and light armor. You know, it's it's not that it's uh, not a barrier to entry. It's just that a lot of these barriers have already been broken through. So what? I'll actually give Kevin this. I think there's a little bit of a... Well, I probably did not communicate this right, 
but I was also wrong in a way. So I'm rarely wrong. Yeah. Just pointing that out. <laughs> but Kevin's right. I think they are the most trained of the classes. Yep. Um, but that is something that everybody can very much do. The difference in, say, a draconic sorcerer, though, is like you can train all day long. You'll never be seven feet tall. <laughs> That's the kind of thing. Like right. you have to be chosen. But where I was wrong is this is D&D, you know, it's we can be like, well, in the world, technically, you wouldn't be a draconic sorcerer. Well, in the world, technically, the average player is going to be a peasant. That's not <laughs> how we play. We play to be cool warriors. So, no, yeah, it is absolutely true. You do have to be you have to justify how much training you put into being a fighter. You can't just phone it in and say, yeah, I learned how to use a sword once. Yeah, like I was a farmer and I got attacked by wolves and so I fought him off. Now I'm a fighter. It's like, no. They, <laughs> that is the plot of you... a lot of manga for the record. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't give you proficiency in every single weapon in existence. Oh, yeah. No, I um, totally agree with that. Yeah. Even I, like when you, if you multi-class into it, the proficiency you get. So if you, let's say you start monk and multi-class to fighter, you get the proficiencies in every single weapon. That's a weird one to just justify all of a sudden... Well, yeah, you know, I just, I'm, I'm a monk, so I'm good at fighting. So I take some fighter classes and, oh, I guess I'm can now comfortably fight with every single weapon and armor in existence. That's, that's fair. I will say that of the classes to, uh, mesh though, monk is kind of the it's, only it's other one. probably that's, the yeah, best. Yeah. yeah. Well, like the, the number one thought with a monk is lifelong dedication to their craft. Yeah. Okay. That kind of lines up with the fighter's ideals. Yeah. Uh, um, you, then the only difference is, uh, hey, do you also train with weapons? Yep. Yeah. All uh, right. So we've got that covered. Yeah. Kenzai monk works really well. Yep. That's the really obvious one because their whole thing is. So the monks, their, their training is to gather energy from within and harness this key for martial prowess. Um, and then the Kenzai ones focus specifically on using that with weapons. And so mm -hmm. they get additional ones and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, the only issue, uh, is that at the, the point of low levels for the Kenzai monk is that you do have the ability to use any single weapon. Uh, and it is more of like a, a suture ability. That's just like tying these two classes together where it's like, yeah, you can be a monk. Uh, and now you can use a, not a great sword cause that has the heavy, uh, but you can use a much wider array of weapons. Um, it's more of just making it possible at all. Otherwise, if you're just going any other type of monk, you're losing out on the ability to use 10, 15 different weapons. And right. you, know, you can only use a quarter staff again. And being so, a yeah, fighter was kind of pointless. That's what I added, though. Yeah, if you're not Kenzai monk, you're dual, two handy and a quarter staff. Yep. Which works as a monk, which is decent. It's, right. and, it's not yeah. bad. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's a suture ability. It's a, it's an ability. You're going the subclass to allow yourself to go the fighter and actually make it worthwhile. Yeah. Um, leads us into our first subclass combination. Uh, Kenzai monk with, uh, battle master. Bat Why does that name not sound right? It's battle master, right? Mm -hmm. yes, battle master. master. Yep. For some reason I said that it says that sounds wrong. So the, the bonus action King. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Kenzai monks, you know, they could get ranged weapons. Battle masters can also use ranged for for the majority of them. Obviously, not everyone like mm -hmm. parry and repost. No, but yeah. um, most of them says on a weapon attack, apply this. Yep. So I don't know how you're going to trip someone with a longbow, but it says on a weapon attack. <laughs> I think it is a melee weapon for some of those, though. Most of them, no. Really? I'm going to assume if he, if he specifically brought that point up, it probably doesn't. Yeah. I'm sure that that's something you would have noticed. Uh, <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> so I think that could ultimately just be really... That character could be a blast to play. You have so many options. Right, uh, right. You are limited by the bonus action. But the Battle Master maneuvers, you only get four of them. So it's not like you're doing that every time. Mm -hmm. So pretty much you're always get use of your bonus action. So when we're talking about action economy and all that, that's it's not like a full another action for action economy, but it's kind of like half an action. Yeah. So if you're not using one of your Battle Master maneuvers... You can, you know, you're doing flurry of blows or if you're in melee getting the extra unarmed strikes or whatever. Yeah, the one thing that I like about the, the Kensai Monk is, uh, you know, you're obviously going to be losing that unarmed strike as a bonus action. Uh, so it makes up for that by giving you just a, a D4 to your attack yes. when, you, when you use that uh, ranged attack. So you're getting that plus whatever you want to use your superiority die for. I uh, really frees up what you can do with your bonus action, uh, seeing as that's usually limited by the key. Uh, the one thing that I ran into was both of these classes uh, really start to come into their own around level five when they get their extra attack. Mm -hmm. So if you try multi-classing before that, you're really just delaying the 
best ability you're going to get, uh, which can really kind of suck if you're trying to do this multi-class from the start. You also bring up the multi-attack. That was one of the worst, uh, I wouldn't say worst, but kind of a loss is, you know, you don't multi-multi-attack. You pick the highest multi-attack. So that is chalked up to a loss when you multi-class. Mm -hmm. Yep, so at, for one of them, if you go past level four, you, know, you get level five, uh, you're just wasting your time mm -hmm. for, for one level. I mean, monks get other things at level five as well. Um, no, not much. They get basically nothing. They get Stunning Strike, which is a pretty good ability, but the extra attack portion is lost. You, yeah. for the record, were right about most of these maneuvers. There's only yeah. three that require melee attacks, and they're very they're really reactions. specific. Parry, mm -hmm. repose. Well, that's mm -hmm. that's what I noticed. I mean, I, I have to be honest. I haven't looked at the fighter class too much before this week, uh, but looking through the maneuvers for Battlemaster... There is so much versatility. Yeah. Oh, they're fun as fuck. Yeah, it's... I mean, it's like you can just always do something interesting. And it's it's really making the um, making sure that you're doing something other than attacking every single turn, more or less. Yeah, and just in case if anyone's not aware, the Battlemaster's main thing are their maneuvers. They get four superior... Superiority. Yeah, superiority dice, which are D8s. Um, and then when they make an attack, they can... Or at various conditions they, they they get to pick three maneuvers and this is stuff like trip attack so if you when you hit with a weapon attack you can attempt to trip them by adding you roll your superiority dice add that number to your total damage and then they have to make a save or they're prone right um there's a bunch of stuff like that shove them or you could hit them and then goad them to attack you where they get disadvantage and everyone else they even have ones where you can like rally your friend yeah give them a free attack yeah um parry where if you are hit you can roll your superiority dice and add that to your ac repose where if you are if they miss you you could reactionary attack them back really cool stuff yeah and then so like i said you get four of those yeah four four superiority dice per short rest yes and then we, we come back on a short rest so it's just a really cool class mechanic that that we've never had a battle mask no i don't we have i keep never. meaning to make one and just not <laughs> Uh, I, one of the things that's kind of cool about the Battle Masters, I think a lot of, um, especially beginner players, they think, oh, you can do anything in d and He's like, oh, I stab him in the head or I disarm him with a quick flurry of... It's like, no, nah, you can't really do that. You're a rogue. Right. The Battle Master can do almost anything you can think of combat-wise in their turn with superiority dice. And I think what's really nice about it is it offers a reasoning. It's saying, this is something that you have to be skilled with. You can't yeah. just say, oh, I'm fighting this person in one-on-one -on -one combat and I want to try and trip them. I know that sounds silly, but like that is something that you well, need no, to train for. You can't. You can give up one of your attacks to do the shove action to trip them, or you could disarm them. True. But it gives up your an entire t attack. Right. Yep, this right. allows you to attack and do it. That's where it gets complicated. Yep, yeah. No, you're, you're definitely right. Um, one thing is if you go with uh, the fighter most of the way, I think at 11, level 11 with the fighter, you get a third attack for your attack action. Uh, so that combined with Flurry of Blows is just so many attacks. I mean, you've oh got the most attacks of really any multi-class yeah. that I can think of. Uh, on top of that, you've got Action Surge, if mm -hmm. you're you're feeling crazy, where you can double that, and you get another bonus attack. Yeah. So you yeah, can you just... Both. Oh, my God. Yeah, at a level 7, do. level 5 fighter, uh, 2 monk, you could get 8 attacks in one turn. Yeah. You get your extra attack, so that's 2, then you flurry of blows, 2 more, so it's 4, then you Action Surge, and do it all again. Yep. Which is, I mean, it's not that crazy damage wise. Like there's no, spells no. that will do more than that. Where I see the big benefit is everyone's an individual attack. You would make a great mage slayer. Every, all eight of those attacks force a con save yep. if they're concentrating on something. Very true. Very true. Um, so I would almost want to take some of the fighters, get a bunch of ability score increases, take one of those and give them the mage slayer feat and have it a character that's based around destroying magic users. I think, I think that's, they'd be very good at it. <clears throat> that's probably, in, in my opinion, one of the most important things to pay attention to as a fighter, where it really separates between a first time playing the fighter versus somebody who's been playing for years playing a fighter. Um, somebody new, it's like, great, I get all these ability score increases. I'm good at everything. Hooray. But if you know what you're doing, you're going to take feet after feet after oh, feet yeah. and just round out your character in ways that you're just like i control this map i do <laughs> what i want and really specialize your character uh from a uh initially bland character so i'll say the fighter by itself just going up straight 
like battle master yes you get a bunch of different maneuvers but like the champion extremely boring without feats right. in my opinion i think uh their level three ability is brutal not brutal critical but um, improved improved critical, critical. You crit on 19s now. right which i mean is nice then at level like 10 you now crit on 18s yeah <laughs> And their level seven ability is they get advantage on some saving throws. All I think. athletic stuff. Yeah, yeah. That, they, that they're not proficient in, they can add their proficiency bonus. That's it. Yeah, That's I mean, it. they're solid, but... Right, very solid, yeah. very, but just... But at the same time, um, I think it works out Battle Masters generally. If you're making good use of your superiority dice, Battle Masters out-damage them. Oh, I'd be surprised if they didn't. Yeah. So the only thing, again, is just that improved criticals. Right. Yeah, the champion actually makes a better tank than anything else. Yeah. Um, battle master is the master of the battle. It's, <laughs> I, I, I've said this before. A lot of these classes seem boring cause you're only real. Like in the end, the end of the day, you really just, you can attack. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to apply that to a battlefield to make it advantageous for your enemies, it can seem like you just don't have anything to do. And you're just like a faucet of damage. Right. But it is a phenomenal for control putting yourself in the right positions, hitting the right people, breaking concentration, imposing any kind of opportunity attacks. That, both the monk and the fighter, while initially boring, they have probably the most tactical range of any other class. Definitely. And you can trip somebody on your first thing and then just do eight attacks into them with action search <laughs> <laughs> well, they, and they're all crits right trip if they're prone no 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 you get advantage, advantage. okay sorry advantage. which is still really but yep. if somebody casts hold person that is a great opportunity to make all eight of your attacks oh my god <laughs> uh hold person i thought once you hit them they get knocked no. out no no okay. no hold person they're paralyzed every if you're within five feet you have advantage and if it hits it's crit do, what does <laughs> stunning strike do again Something strike stuns them, man. Yeah, stuns them for a round. So that does not give you advantage, no, does it? No, it paralyzes is specifically what gives you advantage. Okay. Okay. Or so, petrified one. Yeah, paralyzed, yeah. Paralyzed. Uh, so Kensai at higher levels gets pretty boring, in my opinion. Level mm -hmm. six, you can overcome magical resistances. Your Kensai weapon overcomes magical resistances. By level six, a lot of times you have a magical weapon, and it's not guaranteed... But, you know, yeah. it's not that hard. Um, I think you also get something else. Oh, I don't. It's something with your archery. You don't have it pulled up? No, I don't. Damn it, Jared. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Way of the Kenzai. It Kenzai is shot. Yeah, what's that? What is this? What am I looking at? <laughs> you can use a bonus action on. So it's a level. The level one of third three ability. Where you get the Kenzai weapons, the agile parry. Which is great. Um, you make an unarmed strike as part of the attack action on your turn. Oh, yeah. Agile you know, parry is weapon. really you nice, get, yeah, actually. Plus two bonus to AC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's one thing I wanted to bring up. Yeah. Your AC is going to be off the charts with this combination because you only need dex and wisdom as your skills over 13. Right. Uh, you can entirely ignore strength if you want to. Yeah. And go finesse weapons for your, your Kensai weapons. Um, if you want to go strength, yeah. or well, that's fine, the but... Kenzai weapons count as martial weapons, which means you could use or not martial weapons, um, monk weapons. Yeah, monk weapons, which means you could use decks. Right. So. Nope. You're totally right. So, I mean, you really only need to focus on two stats. Yeah. Um, if you have wisdom and dexterity at 16, so you're getting that plus three. Uh, that means that you're going to have a what is that? 16 for your, um. Yeah, so it's Your 10 AC. plus dex plus wisdom is the monk un unarmored. Right. So, right. <clears throat> yeah, so, if you get up to 20 dexterity, so that's 15, and then, you know, the three wisdom and 18. Right. Plus your uh, agile parry that you can basically get every turn. It's not too many stimulations. Well, it's, it's part of the attack action. As so long keep, as you take the attack action. No, it's if you make an unarmed strike as part of the attack action. Right. Which, so it's not the bonus attack. Yeah, the bonus attack that you get doesn't do it. You'd have to hit him in the face. So oh, you have to give so up, you, you know, whack him with a quarter staff or whatever. To That's still, I mean, but, yeah, having that option yeah. is really great. Plus two to your AC is nothing to scoff at. Uh, and top of that, you can take a fighting style, which we haven't even talked about those yet. Um, you're kind of limited in the fighting styles you can take. Like you're not mm -hmm. going to take protector because you're not going to have a shield as a monk. Right. That's silly. Um, dueling, you're or what is it? Two handed. Two -handed yeah. Yeah. You're probably not going to do that because well, you could. You can. You definitely can. Um, but a great weapon fighter actually would work because the it needs the two handed or versatile and quarterstaff is versatile. So would you want to do that though? Well, I, if if your main thing is a 
quarter staff. You know, let's say you don't go, if you, you go open hand instead of way of the Kenzai. I really don't like using the great weapon fighter unless you're doing the uh, great sword. Just it, because, yeah, it's got the 2d6. The 2d6, That's it gets yeah. kind of absurd with the rerolls. Right. right. I mean, it's it's useful otherwise. Rolling a 1 or a 2 on a, a d10 yeah. really sucks. Eight. Yeah. Or d8, whatever. Um, It, it sucks. But yeah. it's just not as worthwhile compared to the 2d6. Um, but you can still do defense, which is a boring style, to be honest. It's just plus, plus one to AC. When wearing armor. It's, you're actually it? really, really limited on the oh, fighting styles. Okay, yeah. then you can probably only do... Um, oh, wow. Archery. Dueling. So, yeah, if you're a Kenzai monk and take the longbow or whatever, archery would work. Yeah, that one's Dueling good. Dueling would work really well. If you have one weapon. If that's you have it. one weapon, because that's what a monk probably... Like, right, but then you can't... Think. That's that's fine. Then you'd have to hold your quarter staff with one hand. You're not doing it yeah. with two hands. If you're holding it with two hands, then that's negated yeah. as well. Yeah, or I mean, you do some short sword, rapier, but or whatever. that's not a big deal, because yeah. I mean, then if you're if you're having a weapon in one hand, you're always getting your agile parry then, because you... I mean, you're not always... Sorry, you're, right. you're, you're having that unarmed hand, yeah. um, which I guess there's not too many limitations on, but regardless, I think you're good to just keep your AC with plus two every turn and you just do a little bit less damage. Right. It, it puts you into this realm of almost being, I know not a tank. It's not in D and D, but it gives you a lot of sustainability. You're hard to hit because now you're at a 20 AC at level four. And right. That's just great. Maybe a little bit less, but you know, close. Uh, I totally missed that defense doesn't work. So you have to wear armor. Yep. You lose like all of your monk abilities the second that you put on one piece of armor. Yeah, as soon as you, <laughs> yeah, monks, uh, mm -hmm. they're not quite like barbarians. You can do an armored barbarian pretty easily, mm -hmm. but with a monk, it's just a lot harder to justify losing that. It is, yeah. Um, Arcane Archer is an interesting fighter one. That's in Xanathar's. Um, yeah. By itself, I, I really want to love it, but I can't. It has such. Cool sounding ability. Its main thing is your magic trick shot, or right. I forgot the exact name. But when you hit with ranged attack, you could choose to apply this magical effect to the arrow. And I think you pick two of them to start, and then you can pick a third and stuff like that. Okay. And it has one magical effect for every school of magic, and it fits really well. So if you pick the, um, what's the blowy up shit? Evocation. Thank you. Yes, I know all these, but <laughs> yeah, if you pick evocation and you hit with the arrow, you could choose to make the arrow blow up and do a bunch of damage to everyone around it. Or if you have the um, necromancer one, you can necromancy. Yeah, you can. It could do extra necrotic damage and then sap them of their strength for a round where all of their attacks will do half damage. Ooh. Yeah, just co cool stuff like that. And it fits very thematically with every Does school that of cost magic. Something is it like a superior? You could do thing? it twice per rest. For short rest. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's super limited. Yeah. That like is. The, those, the abilities are not good enough where it's like, oh, I can only do this twice where it's like, oh, that's good. It's so, like, it's, that's where I get frustrated. Right. I think there it. is some value to it. Um, if you are looking to be, a, well, frankly, an arcane archer, <laughs> this is your best bet. It is. Yeah. Unless you just do some weird multi-class. And here, monsters in multi-class, we always <laughs> discourage people from multi-class. It's just, it's just not, it's not good character. <laughs> but yeah, it, no, you're right. This, it, you look at it and you're like, I really want to love this. And like, I just, I don't hate it. I just feel kind of medium about it. Right. Especially the yeah. fact that you only learn two of these things initially. I think you learn more later, but... That's just, it's a yeah, very... You gain additional arcane shot options of your choice when you reach 7th, 10th, 15th, and 18th. But you don't get that's any actually, more... That's nice if you... Yeah, but so that's you get to choose more. Yeah. Terrible for multiclassing. But you don't ever get more uses of it per short rest. Even superiority die, you get 5, 6 uh, later on. Yeah, that was one of the more... Uh, one of Controversial the worst points. points is that you just... It's kind of... You only get two. That sucks. Yeah. I hate this. Yeah. So multi-classing though with the kenzai monk who has the longbow is their monk weapon i think it kind of rounded out nicely i think that's a yeah. good way to do that right I actually, earlier i said do the longbow with the battle masters I, you can but there's no reason you can't do that in melee right i don't know why i would i got mixed up in my head there well the kenzai but, just gets a lot of good stuff for ranged yeah like surprisingly good stuff and you're you the d4 you're yeah. going dexterity so of course you want to use ranged right uh <laughs> sarcasm no. okay just it just doesn't matter there's, yeah there's nothing limiting you there um, yeah, so Arcane Archer, Multiclass, Way of the Kenzai Monk, mm -hmm. using a longbow, I think would be a pretty cool character. Yeah, I, I think 
one of the things that I dislike about this multi-class overall is the only one that I really liked as a combination was the Kensai Monk. Everything else just kind of fell flat for me. You think I think uh, way of the open hand, of course, because yeah. that's just a great yeah. monk subclass. Yeah, but go just, ahead. again with Battlemaster, again it just gives you tons and tons of options for battlefield control. Way of the open hand is when when you it adds a bunch of good stuff, but its first ability when you take it at what level three? Um, I mean, whenever you hit somebody with the flurry of blows attack, which you do a lot as a monk, right? There's one of three effects you could just apply. Right, must succeed on a dex saving throw or be knocked prone. Must make a strength saving throw. If it fails, you can push it 15 feet, or it can't take reaction until the end of your next turn. The reaction one is probably overlooked a lot, but that is really useful. It that is. That just allows you to just run around however you want, um, especially because can you you can do that to other multiple creatures at once so if you're up in it and like three things are around you you can flurry of blows and any of them that you hit just take away the reaction with that flurry of blows right i think that you'd only be able to do two at a time uh but that's still good get rid of those opportunity attacks my one issue with it is at level six you get the wholeness of body you gain the ability to heal yourself as an action you can regain hit points equal to three times your monk level uh very similar to second win the fighter ability that you get at level two. Two, I think it's two, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, it's just a, a bit of overlap. It's kind of nice. I mean, that's just more hit points you can give yourself, but, you know, it's the same ability. Right. But it doesn't interfere with it. It is just an addition. Correct. The only real interference here <clears throat> is that extra attack thing. Right, at level five, yeah. Um, it's not bad, that's that's for sure. Uh, way of the open hand, it really gets good in later levels mm -hmm. um i would almost like to see a level 20 character with quivering palm uh so that's 17th level for monk and then just three and battle master <laughs> <laughs> so you just have i mean ridiculous amounts of things you can do yeah it'd be fun um that that is another thing though with monks they scale linearly as we've discussed before uh they get key every single level they get another key point uh, those only come back on a long rest, not on a short rest. So the less you take in monk, the less useful you are as a monk. Whereas fighter, you can take that three, uh, right. three levels in battle master and you're getting a good chunk of the class. Action uh, surge, second wind, and then all the maneuvers and stuff. Right. And a fighting style, which in this case isn't too great. But right. again, you just, the fighters are so front loaded yeah. uh, that unless you're really going for that extra attack at 11th level and at 20th level where you can get four attacks uh you're not missing out on too much in the later levels right and um fighter is definitely good to multi-class out of there's always the concern of so ability score improvements where which could also be feats always come are based on class level mm -hmm. and usually come at four eight twelve sixteen and i think 19 not 20 but 19, um, yep. and so there's always an argument of trying to make sure you get those because otherwise you really gimp your character if you multi-class out of level three and then you're restarting again, and you're not getting any ability score improvements until level seven at that mm -hmm. point, where everyone else got it at four. But the fighter gets so many more. They get at four, six, eight. Um, not 10, I don't think. I don't think 10. 12. 12. 12. Yeah, and then yeah. 14, So it 16. gives you a lot more flexibility. Right. And 19. Yeah. Jeez. So many. Yeah. So you can multi-class out at level six and still and not worry about that level eight one and still be on par with everyone else. Right, right. And that's probably the best way to go about it is getting up to either five uh or five or with the monk to start or six with the fighter to start uh just so that you can get that extra attack and then from there you're golden i mean level up whichever thing you think is going to be most worthwhile um, right whatever order you want uh it just really sucks to wait until that seventh level to get your um ability score increase or the extra attack whichever yeah big bummers <laughs> all right so we talked a lot of mechanics does anyone have backstory ideas role playing on this no uh <laughs> <laughs> not at all i think it's too open it's no just, exactly you, you can do whatever you want these are both paths that are very easily chosen for someone who devotes themselves to martial craft right mm -hmm. kensai and which is again the, the best one we've thought of so far is just dedicating your life to martial abilities they just are the same thing. You can become a fighter and a monk in the exact same way, spending every single day swinging some weapons around, and now you're great at it. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just the only difference is a more spiritual devotion to the craft, 
um, which I, I don't even mean that spiritual isn't like godly, just, you know, the, the Buddhist spiritual. Right. Uh, the key points. The key points yeah, and everything. Yeah, the your inner energy. Right. So, I mean, there's there's that, but that's just a monk. So if you've got a Kensai monk figured out, you've got a fighter Kensai monk figured out. Kensai, definitely. That's another one of those cases where it, we've seen it come up a lot. It almost feels like double dipping in a sense. Mm-hmm. Like that was their solution where if you want a monk fighter multi-class, just take the Kensai monk and don't worry about the But they the made them both better. Yeah. <laughs> You know, same with like um, the nature paladin and druid and things like that. It's right. Just, or the trickster cleric and rogue. It's just. Right. Um, um, so non Kenzai, though, um, I like the idea of a knight. So your your character is a knight. And so they've gone through very intense training for that. And they're working under a really intense king. Um, they're not. Maybe the king's not. Maybe they're evil, maybe they're not, but they demand so much of their knights and the stress of it just becomes too much and you have to retire from knighthood and you, you, you leave off into the world and you come across this monastery who they take you in and this kind of inner peace kind of meditation stuff is really just what you need in life right mm-hmm. now. And so then you start working on being a monk. Yep. Yep. That was a definitely another way to, to go about it. Basically start as a fighter, want to be a monk so like a stress release kind of thing I don't know, it's a bad way to <laughs> like put it. that kind of like puts it in the modern sense of buddhism like oh my office job's so hard I'm yeah gonna go to <laughs> India and think about myself <laughs> no I mean, the, the stresses of being a knight for this kingdom is mm-hmm. too much like you cannot live this life anymore so um what i would I, i'll actually expand on that it's there is a possibility as a fighter that you would be asked to do things that you aren't entirely happy with mm-hmm. uh, some would go the way of the cloth and go kind of the cleric way, ask God for help. Others might look inwards and try to master that kind of thing. So I think that also works yeah. very well there. That would be like an uh, alignment change. You might be a lawful evil knight, but you're like, I, I can't keep killing villagers for no reason because my right. boss is just a cartoon version of a bad guy. Yeah, <laughs> I have to learn the way of uh, whatever, you know, monk. I'm having a hard time thinking of it the other way around. Not like a terrible time it just kind of falls flat for me where monk you're first and then fire yeah where you're a monk and then after a while you're like oh this adventuring thing's really cool i should learn other weapons and then you just <laughs> continue doing what you've been doing just now with with more weapon yeah. training um, so you're gonna avoid armor that's the one thing that you don't i mean you get the ability to be proficient in armor but yeah what i'm gonna put out there is the samurai yeah, um, that's the the fighter subclass. Yeah, yeah. So, so is there we, anything we, good we, from the samurai? Because well, okay, <laughs> that, you're already shitting on it. <laughs> I'm yeah. Is I, it good at all? No. Yeah, well, I, I looked it over and it, I just didn't really love the class at all. So uh, you get bonus proficiencies. Those are nice. Fighting spirit, which gives you an advantage on all attacks on your turn, all weapon attacks. Okay. So that does kind of hamper that. Um, and the. Elegant Courtier, it gives you charisma bonus. Uh, it gives you bonus to persuasion checks, but you also get a saving throw in wisdom. And if you already have that, it goes to intelligence or charisma. So oh. that is something that there is no loss there. Mm-hmm. And it is very thematically uh, accurate. You Doesn't can, it just seem almost too, too on the nose? Too thematically accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah but just I'll like, yeah, the Kenzai monk is their option to get a monk fighter multi-class without multi-class and samurai is the fighter's option to multi-class as the monk without actually multi-classing right it also just seems like we're just trying to smush together monks and samurai because they're both eastern culture <laughs> it feels pretty lazy i'm not yeah. gonna lie all right you yeah, know like thematically it's kind of phoning it in but i think mechanically it works pretty well okay not as well as Battlemaster, uh but it is uh definitely an interesting possibility and like flavor wise Like, the samurai dedication is not exactly the same as a monk. They are dedicated to uh, violence. It's the same mindset, but different end goals. So you definitely can have... You could have... Here's the reverse. It's a monk that, you know, realized that his inner meditation was not enough to protect the people he loved or save his temple. And he's like, now I'll be a samurai. I will be the weapon that I need to be. So okay. That, okay. that's that's the possibility we were talking about that we couldn't really think of. Yeah. No, sure. I like that. Yeah. I like that actually. That's fair. Yeah. Um, another thought of starting monk, multiclassing over to fighter role play justification. Uh, monk at a monastery, 
the kingdom breaks out in all out war. And even though these monasteries are supposed to, they're, they're like separate from all that. They're out of politics. The are still forcibly taken and forced into the army and you're trained up mm. as a soldier. Okay. The idea that they're yeah. a sanctuary, but you know, this leader is not buying that. And now you're conscripted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like that on top of that, then they just go AWOL. And they, sure. you know, they, yeah. they hate it. Yeah. That's why would they want that? Uh, you know, there's a bunch of ways to play that. So yeah. I think that's really good. Um, does this run into the issue where it's weird to start off at level one like that, though? Yep. Okay. That's what <laughs> I was thinking. Yeah. Cause there needs to be all that intense training that's would just be skipped over if you're actually playing it in the campaign. Right. Unless it's a campaign with a lot of downtime. Which yeah. we don't personally do much of, but you definitely can. I want to, like, throw out a poll of how many people start their campaigns at level one. Because I think it's actually very low this edition. I've yeah. just from anything I've heard and read, everyone kind of likes to skip to at least level three. Yeah. And I think a lot of parties are kind of uh, biased to being badass. Like that's not necessarily <laughs> a bad thing. I definitely get that urge. Right, right. Uh and they just skip over to like level seven, level eight. You youngins. <laughs> Especially with custom campaigns, like when you were, when we were doing the official campaigns, there is an arc and rebalancing an entire professionally made book because you decided to start at level seven. I mean, <laughs> out of the abyss, you start as prisoners. That's not right. really a spoiler warning, but that would have been like really hard to do at level seven. It's like, yeah. oh no, no, I'm a badass. You can't really do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh well, there's a hundred drows. Like I still get out of the cell. I have like nine hundred abilities, and my strength is. F- <laughs> 20 yeah i mean we stayed low levels and out of the abyss for a while it took probably three or four sessions to get to level three i don't remember exactly how long it um, was. so the first chapter took you from one to three okay getting out of prison but the first chapter we spent like a, a couple sessions yeah. no it was close it was it well, in, in valkynov yeah i think it was two or three yeah i think it was two or three sessions because i don't think we leveled up until we broke out of the cell and yes yeah, yeah it's besides the point really yeah. but uh i'll just say that for a uh leveling up usually like uh curse of strahd you start with the death oh, house death house thank you and that takes that you fun. from one to three yeah in like a single session or two yeah um so even the the official campaigns are all about getting you to those badass levels as quick as possible uh, one, because the early levels are so deadly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and two, you just can't do much. You're like, oh, I'm a, I'm a wizard and I've got two spells. So I'm done for the day, guys. I'm just going to go take a nap. It's not yeah. that fun. Or you have nine health. A, right. A high hit from a goblin will kill you. Yeah. Yes. I am a raging barbarian. My rage can never be quenched. Ow! Oh, God. Oh, that's an arrow. There's yeah, four goblins. Right. The action economy is not in your favor. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Tried my best. Um, and I'm fine with that because, you know, level one just kind of sucks. But uh, going back to, like, the original point that you did make um, and combining it with this, the fighter is a great, like, uh, in media rest kind of in the middle of things when you want to enter a character that's, you know, between the levels of five and 15, that is a much easier to justify. I'm a fighter. I mm-hmm. did this for years. Right. And I think, uh, I don't know anybody else has made a fighter multi-class, but before the X-Blade, I had the fighter warlock. Right. And he was level seven or so. And the idea was he was a soldier who eventually, you know, became a warlock. Right. And that's, you know, that's easy to fudge when I don't have to play through being a fighter for years. Right. Right. Was they was they a part of that campaign? Yeah, yeah it was the Horde. enemy of dragons, man. Oh, the Horde of Dragon Queen. Yeah. That was my very first campaign, so yeah. I barely remember it. That was after my first warlock. <laughs> I re-rolled a new warlock. <laughs> <laughs> um, I won't get too into it because I'll. I'm sure I'll save it for when we have a paladin fighter. But I was honestly thinking about multi-classing into fighter with my paladin. It fits pretty well backstory wise, and uh, that battle master is just too too pretty to pass up. <laughs> What was the requirement to get Battlemaster? That's level three. Three? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the only issue right there. I've, I've gone over the uh, the ins and outs. The only thing that, uh, and this does kind of tie over with Monk and why you would go Battlemaster in any scenario, because there is a feat that gives you uh, the Battlemaster's maneuvers. Uh, it's to a Gimp Martial extent. Adept. Yes, yeah. Martial Adept. Um, so that feat gives you only two superiority die. I believe per short rest. Um, yeah. 
it's also a d6 instead of a d8 and you only get to choose two of Actually, those maneuvers is i it think one? it was one superiority die. i think it is i know i think you're right super super limited right so it's like an extremely gimped version and on top of that the first three levels of fighter are all really good so as i said I'll, I'll get more into it when we have a paladin fighter i'm sure it'll come up at some point yeah the martial adept feat is if you have a hankering for one very specific thing that they have if it's that attack trip it's parry whatever if you really want that it's good for hunting it down the right. problem is the entire battle master repertoire is pretty good yeah I mean, right there's some stinkers in there that aren't really that good but yeah you just yeah. ignore them most of yeah. them are really <laughs> yeah. just nice to have. yeah so you get to learn two maneuvers and you get one superiority die that yeah. comes back on short rest that's very limited yeah it's just not a good feat. versus yeah it's a d6 versus the four you get and it's a d8 just yeah. for the three level dip and i it's not really a dip at that point when you get up to three yeah, level yeah. but you know it's still a three level dip right um it, one through three are not punishing for fighters they get a Action lot of surge, stuff front loaded. second winds fighting styles yeah. it's great that's that's what i'm saying the fighter is very front loaded and that's i've got no issues with that right get that defense style plus one ac <laughs> Still jealous of Saucy. I really am. <laughs> My paladin has a wimpy 18 AC where his wimpy. cleric. Yeah. Where his cleric has 22 and the guy's just in the back every single fight. And still, every time you get hit, you go down first over everybody. Yep. Like, I don't know that, that hit happens. me. Well, I crit you twice. And like, <laughs> I crit you a lot. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It just happens. It, the die know that they have yeah. to roll real high. You are targeted a lot more. You always, as you should with that high of AC, put yourself in the front. And so you do get targeted a lot. There's a lot more rolls against you. That yeah. you wish you took that heavy armor master feat. <laughs> no, not really. The biggest issue, though, is concentration as a cleric. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Which is totally tangential to this entire discussion. But. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the curse of being a cleric or anybody who has to concentrate. And that's actually one of the nice things about this particular one is you can just be wherever. Yeah. Right. And uh, we didn't mention it, but. Well, way of the four elements sucks. No, nope. A, it sucks. <laughs> it is just a very gimped, uh, gimped monk subclass, and it just there's not a flavor there. It's like you want to be some weird magic using monk that kind of works. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a way of the four elements eldritch knight. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> that's the good stuff. Just have the worst spell casting, but such a wide, wide puddle. Of spellcasting. <laughs> he's like a really Puddle. he's like a level three wizard who's also really buff. <laughs> Just end up punching people every single turn anyways. The realm's but, dumbest wizard. That's but every once in a while is. I waste an action on a water whip. Uh, right. <laughs> so this isn't because I disagree with you guys, but why why such an absolute that the way of the four elements is crap it's basically that i mean just combining it with the fighter more than anything uh you're just not getting even on its own it. if you look at it you are burning it, it is a key point bonfire right for just not great spells yeah. honestly i well i'm not gonna get into home brewing or nothing but uh even just like a bump to the amount of key points they have would make it a lot more viable as a class. Right. Uh, but since they follow the exact same route as every other one and they just get one key point per level, they're just using so many more. I mean, sweeping cinder strike, whatever level they get that, I think fifth level uh, costs three, three and key points. What does it do? Uh, it's burning hands. So you're using. That's it? Yeah. Three key that, points for burning hands. When <laughs> I say that it's not a good subclass, I really yeah. mean it. Right. You are burning key points yeah <clears throat> burning hands is, is a first level spell, spell right yeah yeah first level spell. it's really not the, it's compared it's to, okay i mean it's a cone it does what 2d6 compared to a 3d6 yeah compared to a flurry of blows every single turn right who cares but and it, especially with um the way of the open hand just in comparison right. to that one yeah where you can do something with that flurry of blows on top of it you're just just dead in the water Right. It's boring. Tweeping a cinder strikes only two key points. Well, here's... It, even oh, within itself, sorry. You it's got me. not a good... Is that the dog? Yes, it was the dog. <laughs> even within itself, it's not balanced. We're talking about a class where three key points get you hold person. Four gets you fireball. That's better, but like even at low levels... You, those were high-level requirement right. things. At low levels, it is just... 
like I don't want my key points. I'm going to waste them being kind of spectacular. Right. The right. only thing like it would be impressive to watch a monk cast spells for like the first time and it's like, oh, well, I, that, mechanically, that's dumb. Eleventh <laughs> level just to cast fireball. That's ridiculous. Wow. And you have to use almost half. Well, I'll say a, a little bit less than a third, whatever, to of your resources for that day. At 11th level, as a wizard who obviously can't punch and run around the battlefield as well, a fireball is like, pff, yeah, that's whatever, nothing. it's nothing. And it's how it should be, because I mean, right. fireball's strong, but it's not that strong at 11th level. Right. Where it's like, you know, session, not session ended, but a uh, combat ending. Right. So it's just, it just really needs reworked. I'm tired of it. I'm mad uh, at it. I don't know. I mean, in a low magic campaign, if you had some kind of restriction where it's like you cannot roll a actual caster, I guess that'd be the interesting flavor. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds to me it. like it should have been an afterthought subclass, like Arcane Archer, where it's like, hey, you really want this? Cool. Here's an additional subclass. But I would not have put it in the player's handbook. N- exactly. Yeah. And the player's handbook, it just is vastly overshadowed by the way of the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to say and, that yeah. no yeah. way of the open hand is still the best monk subclass uh, for Ken's eyes for, for yeah. player's handbook oh, okay. sorry. Yeah. sorry player's handbook yeah, player's I don't know handbook. well it depends What the shadow one's also really solid um, I'm not really seeing it so much with a fighter but no no I mean it wouldn't be bad I guess you could try that uh, that whole Batman thing yeah a little bit harder yeah <laughs> uh, yeah probably a good way to make Batman yeah shadow monk uh, way of the Master. shadow and battle master yeah sound good Definitely. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Let's go down that. <laughs> and then we're thinking two two points in rogue, two levels in rogue. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, know you're all this. on board. <laughs> Monsters and multi classes strictly no three multi classing. No. Once we run out of twos, we're gonna have to go to three. I, I'll, actually, once we run out of twos, we're changing our segment idea and, our, <laughs> and the name of this podcast is just a neat legacy thing at that point. <laughs> Well, I think the new segment would just be, hey, here's a thing that we want to make. Let's make Batman. How would you do it? No, our new thing's going to be uh, reviewing food within five feet of us. <laughs> <laughs> this hummus and this potato chip that fell on the ground? Delicious. <laughs> this The potato chip has some nice hair seasoning oh, on it. Is that yeah. dog or cat? Probably dog. dog. The dog has way too much hair. Yeah. Well, it could also be my girlfriend. She also has too much hair. Yeah, no. Uh, everybody needs to embrace the bald train. Shave their head. <laughs> All right. I will say this. Uh, if you are going to triple multi-class like right. a psychopath, All right. the monk fighter rogue is a very viable path. And very Batman-y. Yes. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I'm all in on decks here, boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I that, actually, that could be fun. I have thought about that before and made a, a mock write-up of of those three classes because I had a, a friend who's like, I kind of want to play Batman. And I was like, well, that's really tough unless you want to go into three different classes. So we didn't do that. He, he is his second time playing. How many, uh, <laughs> how many classes did Santa end up being? Was that three? Four. Four. Oh yeah. But that was all the way to 20. You know? Yeah. But it was yeah. only a one level different ranger. Yeah. Beyond that, it was, uh, 10 in Warlock, five in Paladin, God, four in Rogue. Rogue. Christmas. Yep. <laughs> Santa's a Warlock. Oh my God. <laughs> you're so upset about it it's so great i don't even go to church and i feel like going now <laughs> i'm sorry he made saint nicholas into a warlock do you have any other childhood heroes that i could ruin do you want me the to batman make... actually yeah all right let's do that uh batman Batman's clearly needs to be a wizard yeah batman's yeah. a wizard <laughs> what do you wait, wait, wait. artificer we'll throw that oh. in there <laughs> oh, that would actually be fitting, but yeah, no. I, the only justification I could see for wizard is if you reflavor the spells like utility belt stuff and high tech things, which is what the artificer is supposed to be, right? But it just didn't do a good job. Oh, you know, right? the most insulting is like the thunderblast gun using artificer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Batman's a gun user. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like no, I quit. I'm done. I'm never coming back. I think the worst part about playing with somebody who's trying to play Batman is every time they go to kill something, they do a non lethal strike. <laughs> 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 That'd be good flavor. I would actually like that. <laughs> every single time that actually would huh somebody should play batman <laughs> yeah one of these days anyways how do you feel about mr rogers what classes would he be <laughs> <laughs> mr rogers is obviously a paladin oh yeah <laughs> yeah okay, i'll give you that oh, i'll yeah. give you that that sweater <laughs> what do you see from that alone <laughs> you go to hit him he's like not in my neighborhood <laughs> And then he just smites you with a level four 
Boom. Having yeah. friends is important. <laughs> it's okay to feel sad. <laughs> but it's not okay to be a fiend. Boom. <laughs> Do you, do you guys remember that? Uh, I think it was a band's legitimate song, but it became famous because someone did a flash video to it. The ultimate battle of Ultimate Lemon Destiny. Drop, I sure. Yes, yeah, that yeah. was a classic. Yes, Mr. Rogers won that one. Yes, he did. So clearly he was a paladin. Spoilers. Uh, Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't watched that three-minute video from 2006. <laughs> That's some Newgrounds level stuff right there. Newgrounds is coming back now that they banned porn from Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was... Really, though? No, I, that's a joke. Newgrounds will probably never relive its glory days. Oh, that makes me sad. Oh, well. What about albino think, black sheep? Are they coming I back? Think all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think Newgrounds just stole content from other sources. No, it, never was a, it was them. user upload. Yeah. You're talking it? about Ebom's World. If we want to oh, get into real oh, okay. YTMND 2006 internet drama. Yeah. Ebom's World, that was it. Okay. Yep. Elon's mm-hmm. World stole content. Newgrounds was just like User before, uploaded, yeah, it was yeah. before YouTube. So it was no YouTube place to for put Flash. On. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's, that's where I saw Magical Trevor. <laughs> that's uh, where it was uploaded. You know, what? a really embarrassing fact about myself. Hmm. Through absolutely no effort to maintain this, I still have all four Magical Trevor songs one hundred percent memorized. <laughs> and you're about to hear them. Nope. We will <laughs> take his word. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves Magical, Magical Trevor. Trevor. No. <laughs> I don't know why. It's, <laughs> it's like, I mean, the first one came out. I was still in high school, I think. Yeah. It was probably even before that, maybe. Wow. It's like, I do not watch them. I make a no effort to try and memorize them. Like, it, for whatever reason, the like a few weeks ago, it, like popped into my head, like the thought of it. Uh-huh. Like, do I still know these lyrics? I did for some reason. I <laughs> saved them all through in my head. Yep, still got it. <laughs> yeah, I've known them for 10 years. It's been, it's been a problem. <laughs> all 10 years. Oh. Uh. What class would Magical <laughs> No. What do you mean what, what class would Magical it? Trevor be? Obviously a barbarian. <laughs> Trickster cleric. <laughs> <laughs> he was so tricky. I don't think he could actually cast much magic. I think it was kind of a ruse. Oh. But, oh. Yeah. Well, that's sad. Rogue with the charlatan background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> charlatan. Ruining your childhood heroes. Is your childhood hero Mr. Rogers or Magical Trevor? <laughs> Get better heroes. How did you guess? And then ruin it. <laughs> oh. All right. We probably so over. Do you want to go to Monster of the Week? Yes. All right. All right. Today's Monster of the Week is the Red Cap. So, Red Caps are fake creatures born from fresh blood on the ground. Confused? Same. Uh, they first appear as mushrooms with red splotches upon their caps. But upon moonlight, they spring up from the ground with large sickles and iron boots. At clank with every step they take. Uh, they're driven by the desire to kill, as their only way to remain alive is to find a new victim every three days. But how do they come about? Through the bloodshed of a murder. It's very odd. Uh, what do you guys got? <laughs> so if you murder someone... In, Segways are tough. If you, if you murder somebody in the Feywild, their blood will become mushrooms. Yep. And come moonlight. A tiny, grumpy-looking gnome with a scythe will grow out of that mushroom. Yes. Sickle. It is a sickle. Wicked sickle. Mm-hmm. Scythe? That's just like one end of a scythe. That's just driven to kill. How would you use this in a campaign? Uh, I would go, say that go, uh, go. red caps lack subtlety. They live for direct... <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's actually my biggest complaint with it, and it's right there. It's this kind of it lacks subtlety. It's... It says it at the bottom. Volo himself, as subtle as a flung battle axe. It's they're just kind of creepy. <laughs> they're just like edgy, creepy gnomes. Right, and this isn't going to be a campaign builder in no, any is... sense of the word. Uh, <laughs> okay, we'll let you low get level to that in a second. Okay, all right. Um, my sure. first thought is this would just be a fun little one-off thing where they uh, maybe the the party takes a rest in the forest because they were killing stuff and they're like oh this looks like a good place to just rest up for the night and then they just wake up in the morning uh to these red caps murdering them or attempting to murder them um maybe some of them escape and get into the the village and that's just like a a fun little idea there yeah so this thing is not very powerful the challenge rating three 
13 AC, 45 hit points. Um, they pack a wallop, though. Yeah, that was... They the... make three sickle attacks. 2d4 plus four each. Yeah, Wicked. but plus six to hit. Wicked, Wicked sickle. sickles. Yes. Or the Ironbound Pursuit. So if uh, the Red Cat moves up to its speed to the creature... It can see and kicks it with its iron boots. The target must see it on a DC 14 deck save or take 3d10 plus 4 damage and be knocked prone, which is cool. Right, um, so I like these things in a group, for yeah, sure. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean... That needs to be a horde of them. Of course. So when you said not a campaign, I'm not talking about a big, epic, world-threatening, serious campaign, but you could definitely string multiple adventures together with this. So it's born from the, born from the blood of murder. Um, you have an individual who does murder somebody. Maybe it's not... They're not a complete psychopath. It, there was it's a complicated situation. There was some self defense involved, wh- whatever. And then these uh, red caps spring out of the ground. Uh, it's saying they have an innate sense to whoever created them and will often seek them out, either right. to a murder them and be their first victims, or b follow them around, thinking, "Oh, I'll be able to kind of live in their carnage." Mm. And they do the latter. They think you know you get three or four red caps out of it that seek this guy out thinking oh yeah we'll follow the psychopath around and it turns out he's not a psychopath but they're, they're not ready to just say right, we're just gonna kill you and move on they goad him to do terrible things <laughs> and then they end up like slaughtering those around him and that brings more red caps and before you know this kind of like bumbling idiot of a guy who got in a bad situation once and now has this army of like 50 red caps just terrorizing the countryside and all he wants us to do is stop but they just keep multiplying for more and more murders. <laughs> so here's an here's an idea. Um, this this would be a great way to ruin your party's reputation. They kill bandits in the forest. That right. creates uh, like yeah. six of these red caps. They go celebrate at the inn, take their nap, one moonlight. They start following them. It's like, yeah, they killed the bandits. And then they killed everyone at the inn. <laughs> and then they killed everyone in the next town. Yeah. And they're like, what the hell are you talking about? Right. You didn't do it. And then they're like, oh. Maybe it's that gigantic horde of red caps gnomes <laughs> with blood dripping from them. Yeah, but I mean, if they're always like a little bit behind, then yeah, it's, exactly, it's, it's going to be a mystery. It's like, why the hell is my reputation going to shit? I think it would take a while to actually figure out too, because if the entire town gets massacred after you leave, uh, nobody's you know, escaping to to pass the word along to wherever you're going. So at some point, the party's going to circle back and just find a horde of these things, and they're all just going to stand there, sickles <laughs> bloody, just like, uh, you know, hey. I, I think it's a great, that, that's actually a great hook if you want to, like, turn your heroes from heroes of the realm to enemies of the people. Mm-hmm. And then they have to figure it out and be like, oh, no, it was actually, let me explain. Uh, when you kill someone in the wild, they become <laughs> blood mushrooms, and then the first full moon, I don't want to hear it. You can make up as many lies as you want. I don't think you're creating gnomes out of blood carrying sickles and wearing iron boots. Why are they wearing iron boots? I don't know, but what it makes kind a, of liar are you? It makes a really big point about the iron boots. Though. Yeah, it's yeah. like a cruel trick of their existence. Right. It's a, they spring to life with iron boots. They don't seek these out. And it goes on to say, even if they wanted to be stealthy and subtle, they literally can't because the iron boots are so loud, so they are forced into blunt force tactics. Which is hilarious, the idea of like, 10 of them. Yeah. Then you just like have them walking down a road, just clink, 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 charging at you with a sickle. And then when they get close to you, they just drop kick you. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's why this like character is like just so goofy. It's got this like standard horror movie vibe to it. Right. There's point. Yeah. yeah. Like there's there's pointless things added, like the iron boots that makes them spooky, but it's also dumb. It's like clink. (laughs) Clank, clank. Oh no, the red caps are. Co- <laughs> Why does he wield a sickle? Because it's creepier. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's, it's not a better that. weapon than a sword, but yeah, let's give him a sickle. And they just like look like horrifying, deformed gnomes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I will say, like, I mean, you said it against a. Somebody mentioned low level party, but since we are going to say that you got to throw six of them at it, whatever, a horde of them, um, they really are surprisingly strong. Say they, they, they pack they that good punch, yeah, and they can just like glass keep cans. on coming. Yeah. yeah, they're they're definitely glass cans. I would so. say forty five actually gives them enough for at least a couple turns, and that's really risky. Yeah, um, yeah. they're they're easy to hit. They you have know, no real armor. It'd be a real dick way to play this. You kill the red cap, their blood splatters on the ground, and <laughs> more red caps just keep oh, on Jesus. rising up. <laughs> Luckily, the Batman characters just like. <laughs> Knock ah, them out. <laughs> right. Bloodlessly. And then doing what with them? Um, Planting them back in a cave. I don't know. 
Yeah, and then capture them, and three days later, they die anyways. I imagine they die violently. I don't think they just wither. Uh, uh, no, I don't see why they would die violently. It's it just, just says, seems fitting. No, it's like, no, it says 100%. They vanish as if it had never been. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so no blood. Yeah. So that is go. actually the way to put a stop to it entirely. I know that killing them yeah. isn't going to make more of them. I, unless you I want it to. Might. I don't think it specifically says one way or the other. I could have see, blood. like, if you, you could do that as a DM to right. teach your players, like, hey, maybe you should approach this differently than just bashing their heads in. Yes, I think it'd be yeah. a, a funny way But there way is to... a time limit, you know? It's like, oh, they're, it's eventually going to become mushrooms. Right, I think yeah. it'd be good, though. You, like, uh, that very first way I mentioned where they finish an encounter, take a long rest in the forest, wake up, kill these things, and they're like, oh, that sucked. Hopefully we never have to deal with that again because I don't understand it. Uh, and then the next day... They go into a village. Village gets slaughtered at night, and they're like, "What the hell happened?" Uh, red caps are back, and now they have to figure out a different Moral. way to take her. Like yep. everyone yep. you kill, three sprout up from their blood. Exactly. exactly. And then your amoral players. Like, well, let's drown them. <laughs> <laughs> Not an evil campaign, guys. I don't see why this is evil. <laughs> <laughs> it can be justified. I, I, I but, guess again, but at the same they, time, they are chaotic evil. I mean, it's I, honestly, I don't even care though. If if the players decided like, oh, okay, killing them in a way that made them shed blood was the problem. Here's our solution: drowning them. It's super messed up, but like that's good stuff right there. That's why it's, we play D and D. Damn it! <laughs> it's like, what weird solution are you going to figure out to get around this very simple mechanic? Yeah, I'm just kidding. Why are you drawing the line at drowning? It's like I'm I, I understand. <laughs> like I know it's personal that's the issue yeah like you hear it's a terrible way to go i'm sure 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 it is very painful but i mean worse than being slashed up with swords and axes and burnt by fireballs so, yes. i mean it's the answer is yes uh, like throughout human history we draw these arbitrary lines and one of them is for instance when you kill someone you don't eat them and okay. there's no logical reason for that but we draw this line because there's an innate cruelty and inhumanity to it and watching your like normal players, who I guarantee would not come to this conclusion in their real lives to like separate themselves because oh it's not real, just like holding these gnomes <laughs> down while they're just gasping for air and going through the most agonizing death almost possible. It's like oh I don't see the issue. Okay, but what about that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what about that warlock ability? Uh, I think it's the the demon. Hurl through hell. Hurl, Hurl through hell. Thank ability. you. Yeah, where they literally just send them into through the nine hells. The and fly of despair. They do 10 d10 psychic damage. It's very specific. This is just yes, horrifying. Just from the horrors right. they yeah, right. encounter. And you're trying to tell me that's like, well, that's okay. Well, no, I'll say this because to drowning. a fiend warlock has to be a little, a little unhinged. Off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You've thrown your hat in the ring with Asmodeus or one of the more, actually, worse devil lords. There are worse ones, more cruel ones than Asmodeus. But you throw your hat into the ring with the worst of the worst. It's like, yeah, True. no, yeah. I'm okay psychologically yeah. torturing someone for 10d10 damage <laughs> over, like, what, a turn? Yeah, yep. it's one turn. Yep. Six seconds. And there's not even a save. Nope. Is it, if you hit, you just cast them through hell. Imagine like how fucking horrifying that must be to do that much damage in that little time. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, to Will's point, I would really struggle to see, like, Galate, your lawful good paladin to yes. Imitar. Yes. Really struggling of drowning these things. Yes. No, she would tie them up with rope and leave them for three days. It's without tie them doubt. up. Burn. <laughs> I don't see the issue. Ah! Yeah, yeah. No, that's this is a totally separate conversation, but I think a lot of people lose their morality in D and D. I would agree because uh, it, it, I'd say less so than in video games, which we never talk about because video games are terrible compared to D and D. Yeah, but you do <laughs> see this kind of result when you're like mean to car characters arbitrarily. Like people struggle with it, but the DM. It like falls on them. They're not professional artists. They don't have graphic renderings of this. They you can't see the characters cry when you bully right. them. So right. it's like, oh yeah, these aren't people. They're just the DM's figments of his imagination. Yeah. Oh man, I really <laughs> care about some of my NPCs though. Oh me too. We, we actually did develop some. Rip of that. Jim Jar. Rip Jim Jar. Aww, James Jared. James Jared. <laughs> I'm sure everybody does this, but I, I love the art of taking an NPC's name and just uh, just destroying it over time, just making more and more nicknames. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've got Darren Dell, the owner of the Dimsdale Darren Dome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Danger Zone Danger Dome. Danger I don't know. Dome. <laughs> just yeah. Darren Dell Danger Dome. Dan Darren Dell Danger Dome. Dan 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 Dan
It's just taking the meme from that and just extending it to our weird Quaggeth friend. Yep, yep. And I'm sure everybody does it. I mean, I, I even see stuff around it where it's like, uh, you know, as a DM, you come up with a, a really clever name and you're like, yes, this is Errol Farthon. And they're like, oh, you mean Anus Farton? And it's like, oh, I hate you guys so much. Yeah. Like, <laughs> or just normalizing it. I remember yeah. and, like you had this half work that was with us for a while. It, it started with a G. I don't even remember the original name. It was some like fancy name that fit with being a half work. Wasn't Runt? No, 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 no. That was in no, no, no. Oh, It was like oh, Grug or, or no, something along those lines. It was a fitting, complicated name yeah. for a half orc. And we just eventually evolved to just calling him George. I thought it was Greg. Greg. That it was, was Greg. Yeah, yeah, even less than George. Greg. Yep. Yep. It was literally just like, uh, you know what? That's complicated. We're going to call you Greg. What, but, it was over but, time. <laughs> but I played it off well and made him like Greg. Yes. I think they didn't have names. No, Wasn't they had names. No, no, you, you gave him a name. Okay, I'm the matter. absolute worst offender at this because I can't i can't do names or faces because i just basically don't see people i just ignore them just write it down i'm never gonna do that <sighs> you've seen my character sheet it looks like it went through hell and back oh that's what i that can't even does. read my own health most of the time i just bullshit it just <laughs> but no yeah no i'll be like oh god i'm gonna go greg <laughs> greg like, it's why? awful why am i like this i don't know man no i just can't remember these names and I, like I've actually dragged this into my own role playing way. I will never have a character where the name is even remotely hard. <laughs> I named my character Saucy after a website I was building. <laughs> <laughs> but you gave him an actual name too, right? Yeah, and I lost it. I'm not surprised. So, yep, Saucy it is. Yeah, I like it. I like the the fantasy names. I'm a sucker for it. It's totally nerdy. It's great. Wait, what's your full paladin name? Galatea Nolambosk. Yep. Just head shakes like mm, this dude tries too hard. And I do because no. you know what? I'm here to try too hard. I'm not here to be a casual player. We're making a and d podcast, damn it. We're not casual players. This is a casual <laughs> no. D&D yeah. podcast. Yeah. I don't know the rules for most of the classes. I <laughs> and whether or not the podcast is accessible, that's besides the point. But we like D&D. I like the the trying too hard mentality. It's fun. It's something that we can be good at. But don't try too hard too hard. Yeah, that's that's fair. If you're ruining other people's times, you've gone too far. Yeah. It's the universal rule. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, any other things we can do with the red cap? I just think it'd be a fun yeah. quick thing. Say it was not the... Uh, They're good minions for mm-hmm. bags. That, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's mentioned there, too. They can be minions. Eh. That's just good for um, uh, enemy very variety. The but, only yeah. the only real flavor to them mechanically is the drop kick. Yeah, which is it's pretty it's good. devastating. Yeah, yeah. But it's I don't know. It's just so cringy. It's like clank clank clank. <laughs> <laughs> Your character's blasted sideways. What the hell happened? A tiny weird red gnome with iron boots just drop kicked your ass. Wouldn't that be hilarious? Random encounter though. <laughs> yeah, like they're just traveling along and you just get drop kicked by this thing. Like at level two or three, that'd right. be a pretty interesting fight out of nowhere. And then you're just right. like, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> like it got to you almost immediately from fifty feet away. Yeah, because <laughs> it's twenty five foot movement, and then mm-hmm. the action lets them move their speeds. So. Yep. Yep, so it moves 50 feet. Just clank, 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 clank. They just have everybody roll a perception check. If they yeah. fail it, then they just Lowest get a surprise. perception check ever, and then... <laughs> <laughs> I think it is, uh, they have disadvantage, so... Yeah, it'd be a... <laughs> it'd be a really easy one. Yes. And if your players failed, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> but what even be funnier is, like, they just see it coming, and they just see this, like, little... Like, you see a little red-hatted gnome fey creature sprinting towards you, and... The the sickle is really big, but let's just say they put it behind their back for for the fun of this encounter, and they just come sprinting up, and your player's just sitting there like, what is this thing? And then he just drop kicks in, and it just starts <laughs> combat that way. <laughs> it's also, I mean, it's also like an easy DC, so that'd be funny too, you know? Just dodge out of it's the like, way. Yeah, he just sails past you and just, <laughs> just clanks in the back, and then comes at you with a sickle. What do yeah. you do? Uh, I hit him in the stupid face. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. It's just, I think it's so silly. I love these silly monsters. There's so many of them to just in Volo. Throw in. Volos is a treasure trove of very goofy shit. Yep, <laughs> and really mediocre lore. <laughs> <laughs> but lots of it. Like this lots character has an entire half page of lore for a generating what like three, three yeah. monster with 
not, it has no business having this much lore, but that's kind of the fun of Volos. Yep. Yep. It just, it's, you're right though. It's like a, a comical, uh, horror monster where it has to kill every three days or else it vanishes, vanishes. And it's like, it has the curse of the iron boots. Yeah. Yeah. It's just great. Whoa. I love it. Yeah. This is a, the kind of movie that you would make, uh, with $6,000. 3,000 of which spent on fake blood. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing a uh, a one shot pretty soon here. Uh, and that's going to be like level two, maybe level three. I'm definitely throwing these guys in there. Oh, yeah. It'll be good. <laughs> it's going to fit in really well, too. I'm excited. All right. Anything else? Nah. All right. Um, yeah. Ready to sing Magical Trevor? Do you want me to sing the other two? Yeah. Sing All right. The other hold two. on before that. Uh, follow us on Twitter. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter, yeah. or Kevin will come to your house and sing all of Magical Trevor to you. Is that too threatening? That's pretty threatening. Okay. Uh, he'll sing the first two verses there of Magical right. Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> there currently yeah. is no way to like and subscribe, but feel no, free to leave wait, a review. You can definitely subscribe. You can like it, too. You can subscribe. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Subscribe to us on your favorite podcast yeah. player. And yeah. Honestly, uh, the big one's review. It's, yeah. We're it's, realizing it's... Difficult to get a review. Like I don't, I don't always review podcasts, so I get it. But it's like, and it's huge on that. See the search engine optimization within iTunes and getting seen and blah 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 blah. Yep, yep. So if you uh, you know, want to just take some time, just go ahead and leave us a review. Yeah. That's fine. You know, we'll really appreciate it. So just keep on doing that. Thank Next you. week on Monsters and Multiplast, we discuss the SEO of podcasts and why it <laughs> sucks. <laughs> just kidding. All right, do what you want to do. Do you actually want me to sing the? No, no, German? absolutely. No, that's fine. Time. Um, there's going to be a special surprise at the end after the outro stick around friends what I love about this is you can just go home and just record yourself <laughs> I know just yeah. singing, like, all of it I the am end. the editor I am the <laughs> out of the podcast <laughs> uh, alright that's it that's it see you yep. see you next Thanks week everyone see you guys I love you whoa dude that was it's like an ex saying I love you to your teacher or something they're calling her mom that was weird <laughs> All right, we're actually done now. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Fucking weirdos. <laughs> what are we doing next week? <laughs> next week on Monsters and Multiclass. Next episode, we're going to take a look at the Barbarian Paladin Multiclass, as well as hacks from Volo's Guide to Monsters, and as well as a bunch of other sources. Make sure to get us. It's the tricks that he does are ever so clever. Look at him now, disappearing the cow. Where is the cow? Hit it right now. Taking his bow, it's magical Trevor. Everyone has seen that the trick is clever. Look at him there with his leathery, leathery whip. It's made with magic and with a little flip. Yeah, 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 the cow is back. Yeah, 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 the cow is back. Back, back, back from his magical trip. Yeah. What did he see in the parallel dimension? <laughs> Saw beans, beans, lots of beans, beans lots of beans, beans, lots of beans. Yeah, Saw beans, beans, lots of beans, beans lots of beans, beans, lots of beans. beans yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's definitely going on to the, the end. end. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you just keep singing them? Suck so pigeon in half of a stick. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best one musically. <laughs> he's back and he's got a new trick. Magical Travers, ten times as slick as the last time. The last time you saw him, now you can see why they really adore him. You might think his new trick is sick. Sawing a pigeon in half with a stick. Look at the pigeon, now it's in two. Oh my, it's real. And is having a poo. <laughs> Look at the mass in aisle two. Aisle two. That's where we saw the ragu. So much ragu. You really remember it all. Should I just finish it at this point? No. I don't want no. you to. No. I didn't want you to do this one. But you did remind me of the ragu part. I, I missed that.